Right, let's carry on from the previous video. So we, in the previous video, we've looked at what is back endless. We've gone through some of uh, the pricing options. Uh, we've looked at the documentation, the API documentation. We've looked at support and so forth. So feel free to go through that one again or take some time and go through their website. So the first thing I want to do then is to go and sign up. So you're going to click on sign up if you do not have a back endless account yet. You can indicate your first name, you can indicate your last name, email, password, confirm password, and click I'm not a robot, and then register. Now, just make sure that before you carry on after registering here, that you go to your email and you click on the confirmation email. That's very important before you start logging. Okay, so make sure you register first, and then we can log in in this step. Right, if you log in for the first time, you will see this create new app screen that pops up. So what we will do, I'm just going to call this one, this app, I'm just going to call it to do. And the, the subdomain name, yeah, you can take anything you want there. So there's a North American cluster and the European Union cluster. So you can choose which one you want to use there. I'm just going to go with the normal North American cluster. You can also choose some of these blueprints to start your account with or your app with, but I'm going to go with a new blank app and I'm just going to say create. Right, congratulations, you have created your very first app and it's called To Do. Uh, I've already achieved some award here, you are now a community member, this is the first badge that everyone gets when they log in for the first time, great stuff. Okay, and you can see that we are on the billing plan that's called Cloud99 Trial. And you can see there's the missions that we talked about. So these are the missions and where you can start and begin your quest here to complete all of these uh, missions in order to get your springboard plan. Okay, so I've got a video on that, by the way. So you can go and, or go to bit.ly forward slash springboard plan. So make sure you type it exactly the same and that will take you to a video that I created if you wanted to go through my video rather than trying this missions out for yourself. So in some of these missions, I spent a bit more time on them. So probably for some people that could be some something difficult to do. So if you wanted to, you can start your quest and uh, look at the these achievements here. I'm not even sure if that video of mine is still up to date. But uh, please go and have a look at that video that will guide you through some of these quests or most, most of the quests. I actually created a simple Android application that will also help you to go through this. So you can just un or just install that uh, Flutter application on your Android phone and then um, see if you can complete the missions. If you completed the missions, then you will have the springboard plan unlocked for one of your apps and uh, it's only one per account. Okay, so for now, we're just going to keep at the Cloud99. By the way, for this video, when you start playing it, just make sure that you set the quality to Full HD. Right, so I'm going to close this one, and we are back at Backenders. So after you log in, you can see that you can create more than one app, but you can only have one that's on the trial there. Okay, so we've got this to-do app. This to-do app is now on a 14-day trial called Cloud99. And you can see some interesting information here. We've got a back in the subdomain. We've got an application ID. And this one is unique for every application on back in this. You've got an Android API key. You've got an iOS API key. JavaScript, REST, .NET, and so forth. So the same database is cross-platform, you can write and read, write to it, read from it, from any one of these different locations. So in our case, we will be using the Android API key as well as the iOS API key. As part of your dashboard, you can see how many APIs you've consumed for this month, how many messages, push messages, and your disk space being used. So obviously for the Cloud99 option, you've got 20 gigs of data that you can store. If you're going for Springboard, you will have only one gig of space.
Right, if you scroll down, you'll see some analytics. And at the top, you'll see front end and your missions. You can also create some new apps. While you're busy with your missions, you can see that you can earn some credits here, which you can also use inside of your marketplace. So there's the marketplace. In the marketplace, uh, you can, for example, buy the springboard plan. And uh, if you've got some of your other or plans like Cloud9 and Cloud99, you can also buy new data objects, new data tables by using your credits that you earned by completing some of the missions. Right, so if you click on settings, you will have different options at the top. There's API tracking, for example, there's mobile, there's email. If you have a look at uh, some custom domains here, domain control and your team, and you can invite some team members to be part of your team. Right, so if we go to users, you will see some uh, user options that you can set. For example, user registration. You can see that you allow when registering is disabled, no new users can be created. So if there's something that you want to maybe correct before you allow new users, you can switch this off, which means that no new users can be registered using your application. You can also require an email confirmation, yes or no, you can set it on here. Uh, when email confirmation is required, users cannot log in until an email is confirmed. Basically the same as you did now to create your back in this account. If you go to login, you can enable multiple logins for your users. You can enable session timeouts. You can lock out user accounts. And when you choose that option, uh, they will be locked out. And you can choose the number of times there or the time required to unlock. And there's cookie-based authorization as well. If you go to login providers, you can have a look at logging in with Amazon, Discord, Dropbox, Facebook, GitHub, Google, Microsoft, whatever you want. And there's uh, some security roles that you can also have a look at on how to implement, add your own roles here, and so forth. If you go to data, this is basically where our database as well as our users will be. If you go to Scrolling down, you can see that we are currently at the users table, system data at the bottom. So if you click on users, this is your users table. So as soon as you create a new user, and we'll look at that as part of our app, how to create new users, how to register a new user, and so forth. And as soon as you register someone, it will land inside of this table here. They will have an email, a name, and so forth. And if you go and have a look at the schema, um, there's a table editor, for example, and you can see that there's an email, a name, and there's a password, an owner ID created and updated that will automatically be there. And you can see in this case, my email column will be my identity column. So if you wanted to have something else as your identity, not the email, maybe a specific username, then you can change that to something specific. So in this case, the name will then be the unique value that will be the identity that cannot be the same for two different people. Okay, so I'm going to keep it as the email, as the identity column, but you can change it here. Right, so we've got the data browser, we've got the schema, there's some permissions that you can set, there's a REST console also, so you can add some where clauses here and search through your database. So this is just for the users table, but it basically is the same for any other app table that you create. You can go to the REST console and have some where clauses here, use get, post, put, delete, whatever you want. You can also do bulk operations here. There's some configurations also. So if you go to your app table, let's create a new table. So I'm just going to add something, let's say, to do here. We just will create, uh, delete it again. So whenever you create a new table in the console, you will be asked this question, would you like to switch to schema editing to configure the table schema? So you can say yes. And the first column you can maybe have as a to-do as well. And you can enter the type, string, text, date, time, whatever you wanted here. Let's make it a JSON. And you can set some constraints. For example, if you are going to set it as text, you can set some constraints that it must not be null, it must be required, it must be a unique value, or it must be indexed. There's some validators also. You can say it's an email address. So it will validate to make sure that it's an email address. Okay, so I'm just going to use this one as none. Let's just make a text and create. And as soon as you create, you can see that you can add new columns here under schema. 
Now, if you go back to data browser, you can see that there's my column call to do. There's an object ID. So by the way, when we create a new object here, let's say, uh, let's say we're going to say buy mock or something that, like that is the to do. You will see there's an automatic object ID for every object stored inside of backenders. And that's unique. So there's also an owner ID if there is a specific user that saved this and there's also a created and updated. So obviously they won't be updated unless I change something in this line. So let's just say buy food. So I've changed it and then you can see the updated column also changes. So this is something that you can also retrieve in your coding is this created and updated. And in most cases, if you want to delete or to change something here, you will need to have the object ID so it knows which one to change. So the object ID, the created and the updated is also fields that you can add in your custom classes. So this to-do table can translate back to a class in Flutter where we've got the fields of to-do, object ID, owner ID, created and updated. Right, so that's just a quick overview of app tables. Uh, you can also delete a table by just clicking there and saying delete and then it's done and gone. If you go to files, this is where you can upload some, some files here. You can create new folders. You can upload a file directly from here that you can refer back to into your app. Uh, basically, just storage online. And remember, you've got one gig of storage if you are using the Springboard plan. For this plan that we're currently on, the Cloud 99, we've got 20 gig that we can use. Okay, so if we go to messaging, for example, this is where you will be publishing your messages uh, for your push notifications. Uh, you can see some sort of preview there on how it will look and so forth. So you can send your push notifications directly from the console. Also, if you go to messaging, you will see emails there. And we will cover this email part um, as part of the application that we will do. But for example, uh, you can see that there's a confirmation template. You can choose whether to send out a confirmation template that says something like, hello, thank you for registering and creating an account. So as soon as somebody creates an account, it will get they will get this confirmation template. And you can change the text and whether it's bold or not and so forth inside of here with some substitution variables if you want to use the identity parameters name. So the email, for example, you can just refer to as identity name, like we did here with confirmation URL. And that's the confirmation URL. So you can use these substitution variables inside of here to refer to something. So for example, the application name, if you want it to have, I think we called it to do there. So it's lowercase to do. So probably I will not be using it as app name there. I will rather type it in here but you can refer to it. And then you can also choose to send or to not send. So if I do not want to send a confirmation template, uh, this confirmation one uh, to say welcome, then I can just tick it off there and then go and save it at the bottom. And in this menu now, you will see it becomes red. So we will not be sending out a confirmation template. Use a logs in for the first time. You can decide whether you want to send that out or not. So I'm gonna say no. Uh, and if you look at that again, we will not be sending out confirmation template. The user logs in for the first time. I'm not going to send out. But maybe if a, if a user registers for the app, you can show some features to him or whatever. But in this case, I'm also not going to do it. Okay, so I'm going to save that again. So it's your choice on which ones you want to send out. But user request password recovery, for sure, we would want something like that. But I'm not going to use this one. Uh, because this one gives you a random password. And yeah, I don't like random passwords. So if you deselect this one, you will see that this one becomes activated. User request password by recovery link. So they will give them a link. Uh, as soon as they say, let's reset the password, they will get this link and they can change your password or they can change their own password. Okay, so I'm going to leave only this one for now. But remember, you can go and activate these also. So uh, for what we're going to do in this application that we're going to create, I'm just going to use a password recovery. Okay, so you can say, hello, you're receiving this notification because you or something, someone else pretending to be you have 
requested a new password to be sent to your account with the app name application. So you can change this. And if you don't want app name there, you can just say within the to do application. Uh, if you did not request this notification, then please ignore it. So you can change what the user will see there. Okay, that's uh, messaging. If you go into business logic, um, I don't think we're going to spend time in the business logic, but this is where you can create some API services, some event handlers, some timers. Uh, there's Codeless also, which is a, a very nice service that you can use. It's like building blocks that you drag in. It's coding blocks. So you don't need to really know coding in order to do Codeless. And then you can use Codeless to create some sort of service online, and then you can call that also within your app. So if we go to the marketplace, we've looked at that. If you have some credits at the top, you can use that to buy here. Also, you can link up your card and then buy directly. There's also code generation that's quite nice. If you want to start off with, uh, let's say, a Flutter application with real-time chat, then you can download this application. And it's something that's already been set up for you. A basic create, read, update, and delete in a database. Demo, dot classes for defined data tables, a simple file manager, a registration and login page maybe, and if you want to include or create some push notification apps. But we will not be generating any code. We will do everything on our own as if we will be doing it from scratch. Right, and that is it for going through your first application that you created called to do. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.